when I first started teaching, the, I, I basically had four things that I did in class every day. The students would come in, um, they'd have a warm-up activity, we'd go over the warm-up, uh, then they had some homework assignment, and I'd ask, you know, were there questions on any of the homework assignments, we, uh, any of the homework problems, and we'd go over that. Uh, then I would, uh, I would pass out, uh, you know, a set of, of notes, and I would lecture for 30 minutes or so on whatever that, you know, day's topic was. And then the remainder of the class period, I'd pass out, you know, worksheets, and, you know, they would have practice problems on the worksheets that, that went along with whatever the lecture was on. Um, and they would finish the rest of the class with that, and then whatever they didn't finish, that was homework for the next day, and then, you know, do the whole thing again. Uh, the following day. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I didn't like about that was that, you know, the, the lecture was really pretty much, th that, that was the main, that was the main event. That was the, the kind of the heart of the, the period. Um, and, and it meant that I was the one, you know, I was the active, the most active participant, at least the one who was most actively, you know, using my brain during every class period. While the students, yeah, hopefully they were paying attention and taking notes, but, you know, a lot of times I know they were kind of zoning out or, uh, you know, just not really, you know, using their brains certainly uh, as much as I was. Um, and using the flipped model, that, that's not an issue anymore. I've got this, um, you know, they, they, they get the lecture, you know, content at home, and so now when they come to class, I've now got this whole big space of time that I can use for other things. And ideally, I'm using it for, you know, activities that actually, you know, uh, uh, require them to use their brains more. And so that, especially when I first started flipping the classroom, that was both, uh, that was both uh, freeing and intimidating. Uh, it was freeing in the sense that, you know, well, now I don't have to, you know, use this big chunk of time uh, in class every day, you know, while I'm standing up there talking and they're just sitting there, you know, not, you know, not doing anything except listening. Um, but it was also intimidating in that, you know, now I've got this big chunk of time. What, you know, what am I going to do with it? Um, and and that, that took me a while to, you know, to get... Uh, to get to the point where I felt like I was, I was actually using that time uh, in a useful way. Um, and, and I think that's, that's something that is challenging for, um, for a lot of teachers. You know, we, we get good at doing class in this way. We, you know, we lecture and then we give them, you know, problems and they work on them and they do it for homework and they come back and do it again. Well, when the lecture is no longer needed because you've already taken care of that, you know, outside of class, well, now you've got this big you've got this big chunk of time to do other things. And that can be both, you know, simultaneously, you know, exciting and, you know, kind of nerve-wracking at the same time. 